Hello everybody. This is my third attempt, by the way, BTW, on uh, connecting with you all today. Uh, Facebook uh, has done something new and has created, I don't know, something new. So I've posted now twice to my personal uh, Facebook. But anyway, here we are. And I uh, have a lot of interesting things to cover today. And uh, I'm going to, it's going to be repetitious. I'll probably delete this from my other um, Facebook account. But anyhow, let's get started. There's lots to cover. First, let me thank uh, George Dieguez for your uh, post, or rather your uh, submission to me, about curcumin and how that relates to cytokine storm. And um, so uh, the idea is that, you know, when we get in trouble with coronavirus infection, our bodies produce this incredible push of inflammatory chemicals and that's called the cytokine storm. There is some evidence that curcumin uh, may well be a, uh, a way to combat that. Much of what I'm posting right now is animal research and some of it is in vitro research, but nonetheless, you know what? It can't hurt to have uh, add curcumin to your regimen. Um, I want to uh, also tell you this is very important and I'm gonna ask somebody to repost this. I'm gonna post it right now. I am going to be uh, on Our Health Talks, OurHealthTalks.com, live at 6 p.m. So I don't have a lot of time here with you right now, folks, but OurHealthTalks.com, I just posted it. Join me live there. I'll be uh, inter uh, being interviewed, uh, answering questions, and um, giving you all some, uh, a lot more information. So let's move ahead, and if it's repetitions for those who were watching this on the other Facebook site, uh, you know, that's how you learn stuff, by repeating, right? <laughs> First, I'd like to talk about the idea of loss of smell. In medicine, we call this anosmia, and we're hearing more and more about loss of smell as possibly being a symptom uh, that we uh, are associating with this particular viral infection. Well, truth be known, uh, anosmia or loss of sense of smell is not uncommon with uh, viral infections, but it seems to be interestingly characteristic of this infection, uh, so much uh, so that uh, we are now seeing that um, ear, nose, and throat doctors in the United Kingdom are reporting as many as two-thirds of patients are, are complaining of loss of sense of smell. So it might be something to add in uh, to the symptom list in terms of how we might help delineate does somebody have you know, uh, an allergy, uh, a cold, or something else versus coronavirus. But again, other, aller other uh, viruses can have you lose your sense of smell. What I'd like to know, I'm hoping to get some data, would be how persistent is that when people recover? Wouldn't it be interesting if regaining your sense of smell might be a way of determining uh, that you have recovered? I'm not saying that's true. Uh, other countries like South Korea are reporting loss of sense of smell in only about 30% uh, in people who have mild symptoms, but nonetheless have tested positive for a coronavirus. Uh, on March the 22nd, the American Academy of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery recommended that loss of sense of smell, we call that anosmia, uh, be added to the list of COVID-19 symptoms to help with understanding who may or who may not have the infection. Why is that an important piece of the puzzle? It's important because you know we don't have widespread testing available, so we have to reach out to these resources like the idea of, hey, here's somebody that calls you on the phone. I don't know if I have it or not, but you know, a peculiar thing happened. I can't smell anything. That seems to be indicative, certainly not exclusively, indicative of higher likelihood of COVID-19, or so it seems. Now, I'd like to move on to the notion of sterilization and hand washing and what things we should be using uh, to, um, to keep our hands clean, etc. And uh, I think it's first very important to understand that this is not a living organism, that viruses, by definition, because they don't metabolize, they're not alive. So we're not killing the virus with soap or alcohol or hydrogen peroxide or who knows what. We are inactivating it. So it's not as if it's alive and we're killing it. And understand this about the virus. It is enveloped, it is covered with a layer of fat, what is called a lipid uh, bilayer of fat and protein. Now, what do we do when our, we've cooked a dinner 
and we've fried something with oil and then we want to get the oil off the, the frying pan, we use soap. Why? Because soap breaks down uh, fat. Uh, that is why we use soap. It breaks down fat, cuts the grease like they talk about for Dawn or whatever dishwashing detergent you may use, which uh, you, know, you want to get a strong dishwashing detergent these days or some good hand soap that will give a lot of foam and cut fat, break down fat. Why? Because that's how we inactivate the virus. That's why we want to wash our hands aggressively uh, for 20 minutes. Um, again, it's not killing, it's inactivating. Now, we know that the virus is actually very fragile, which is a good thing. When we hit it with soap, we hit it with alcohol, we hit it with heat, or we let it dry out, it, it's curtains for coronavirus which is a good thing. Uh, but we've got to go through these, uh, we've got to go through the motions. We've got to wash our hands for 20 uh, seconds every time we think we've touched something. And let me uh, post for you uh, a, a, a citation to read about what I'm talking about. There you go, I'm gonna post it now. Now, heat melts fat. Put butter in the frying pan and what happens? Take coconut oil out of the refrigerator and it melts. So heat will melt fat, and that's a good thing because heat inactivates the virus. When you wash your hands, it doesn't have to be scalding hot water, but even 77 degrees Fahrenheit is warm enough to help along with the uh, hand washing and the soap, but also a uh, warm wash for your clothing is a great idea as well. Uh, one part bleach in five parts water, a great thing to have around to spray on your packages when they arrive. Uh, to spray on plastic surfaces, to spray on uh, doorknobs from the outside. Be careful, of course, on your rugs and clothing because it is bleach and uh, you'll get in trouble from your spouse perhaps if you bleach too many of your shirts. Um, we know that oxygenated water, like hydrogen peroxide, is effective, uh, but we know that um, it, to be effective, it has to be in the pure form and that's going to be way too traumatic for your skin. Uh, you don't want to use things that are called bactericides or antibiotic types of things unless they're virucidal. Uh, that means killing viruses, but again, we're not killing it. But anything that is an antibiotic isn't necessarily going to be effective. Here again, it's not uh, a living organism. When somebody is at your home uh, convalescing, they still are active, they're in a room by themselves, and you say, go outside, I'm going to clean up your room, you're spraying all the surfaces, and you're going to change their bed. The last thing you want to do is to shake the sheets. Bad move. Uh, because that will release the virus particles into the air where it can remain uh, for perhaps two, three hours and that can be inhaled. I would suggest that if you're going to wash someone's sheets who is convalescing in your home, give them a plastic bag, have them take the sheets and pillowcases off the bed, roll them up, have them open the plastic bag, put them in the plastic bag, give them to you. You take that plastic bag, dump it into the washing machine, probably throw the plastic bag away, wash your hands for 20 seconds in warm water with soap, then put the uh, sheets in, uh, obviously with soap and high heat. That's what you want to do. Then give that person back those sheets and let him or her make the bed. You don't want to be in that room, uh, truthfully. If somebody's sick, you need to be healthy to help care for that individual. Um, the virus remains stable in cold environments, including air conditioning in your home and air conditioning in your car. So keep that in mind. Um, it means uh, windows open as much as possible. Uh, we know that the virus is unable to get through healthy skin. And that's the reason we want to keep your hands healthy. Uh, you're washing your hands all day, by all means, when they're clean and dry, use some moisturizer on your hands because otherwise you're going to develop these microscopic cracks in your hands and that could potentially be a portal, uh, not for entry, but at least a place where virus may hide out in your hands uh, and therefore when you're touching your face, which everybody seems to do, myself included, that might be a problem. Now, should you use vodka? Uh, I mean on your hands, and I would say that uh, vodka is, the strongest vodka I've ever seen is 40% alcohol. That's not strong enough. There is uh, alcohol called Overproof or 151. That is by definition 75% alcohol. That might be the ticket. 
Uh, Listerine, by the way, is apparently 65% alcohol. That's close, and if that's all you have, it's a thought. Leave the surface wet with Listerine. Uh, that might work. Um, so uh, keep in mind that you really want to keep your hands healthy because you don't want cracks where the virus can live. Keep your nails short, really important. Uh, let me move to some questions and then I do have a poem. Uh, I want to invite everybody to join me today at OurHealthTalks.com. Somebody just type that. Oh, okay, good. Kelly, type that. It's OurHealthTalks.com. Somebody type that in, please. Um, and then we'll have that as a link for everybody. And uh, I should have put it in my intro, but I got so flummoxed today with the new Facebook Live situation that uh, that's why I was so late. Anyhow, uh, let me take some questions and then I've got a great poem for each and every one of you. Um, okay, here we go. Everybody, um, loss of sense of smell because of stuffy nose or just in general? It's just in general. There is less stuffy nose associated with coronavirus, as a matter of fact, and the cough is not, at least early on, as productive as perhaps the cold or flu would be. It's a dry but aggressive cough. Once you hear it, um, when you hear, you're talking to people who have been who are positive, uh, you you will um, you will know uh, you'll recognize the sound. It's almost a hoop of a whooping cough. Uh, UV lights, apparently, uh, from Michael Pollack are effective. There is some discussion of UV uh, being used to sterilize face masks. I don't know that to be true. Uh, will the virus stay alive if it ends up in the freezer like on bread? The virus is not ever alive, but will it stay uh, infective? It's a, certainly a consideration. I would be extra careful with anything you're putting in your refrigerator and certainly putting in the freezer. Look, virologists put viruses in their deep freeze to keep them uh, available to them so they can study them. So I would, I would absolutely uh, uh, sterilize everything before it goes into the refrigerator or freezer. Uh, yeah, 20 seconds. If I say minutes, wow, that'd be, I meant to say 20 seconds on the hand washing. If I said minutes, uh, I apologize. Uh, well, somebody's saying 20 minutes. I hope I didn't say minutes. That's a lot of washing. Oh, I apologize if I said that. Don't, <laughs> don't get on my case. All right. Um, hi from Sydney. What are my thoughts on pregnant patients who contract COVID affecting the baby's health? Not determined as yet. Um, are they considered high risk patients? I would think so. Uh, you know, it's a very challenging situation. I have a friend in New York. Uh, whose wife is expecting really, really soon, and uh, it's it's challenging to try to, for them to try to figure out where to go. But I think they've identified a clinic where they can go that has been designated a regional clinic for OB. Hello in Richmond. I again, I'm sorry if I said 20 minutes. Um, yeah, I do have a lot going on. That's true. So anyway, it's not 20 minutes to wash your hands. It's 20 seconds. Okay. Um, yes. Gee, Willikers, um, I, I wish I could fix that. I cannot. I, I erred in, uh, I'm trying to walk it back, as they say. Um, how can 77 degrees uh, kill the virus? I'm not sure that that was the indication coupled with hand washing as opposed to just tap water if there is availability of heat to augment the action of the soap for the 20 years, no, I'm kidding, 20 seconds that you're washing your hands. Uh, soap and water. That's correct, uh, Marnie, uh, for helping with that. Uh, any other questions or posts, let me know. I'm going to need to get ready uh, for this uh, live thing that I'm going to be doing. Uh, is vitamin D safe to nose? There's a reason that vitamin D inhibits. Uh, you know, this is very interesting. I, I've looked at the vitamin D story. I'm taking vitamin D. There is some suggestion or some people are talking about that vitamin D might have a role to play in um, enhancing the binding of virus to the uh, ACE2 receptor. I reviewed that data. I have to admit I wasn't impressed. I don't know, uh, perhaps it's valid. My decision is to continue with, uh, uh, with vitamin D. Uh, okay. 40% um, means 80 proof. Exactly what I'm saying. 80 proof alcohol is 40, 80 proof is 40% alcohol. That's why 151 alcohol is about 75 proof. 
Okay, and uh, can I talk about what supplements cause cytokine storm? I don't think, I, I don't know of any supplement that would cause cytokine storm. When we talk about supplements, we're talking about things uh, that can help reduce inflammation, like good healthy omega-3 fats, uh, especially DHA, uh, newer fish oils that contain what are called pro-resolving, uh, specialized pro-resolving mediators, or SPRMs, or SPMs. So, um, uh, these are, I don't know of any supplement per se that's going to increase inflammation. We want to have supplements, for example, that activate what's called the NRF2 pathway, uh, things like broccoli sprouts uh, and uh, sulforaphane supplements. Eat broccoli, eat uh, cruciferous vegetables. Um, coffee is an NRF2 activator, helps to calm inflammation, so something to think about. Uh, let me take a couple more uh, question, uh, questions here. Uh, temporary loss of taste buds. Haven't heard about that, but uh, that's certainly not uncommon in uh, viral infections. Hello in Sweden. Um, thank you uh, for all the turnout today. Sorry I was late. Technical issues. Do the best I can. Uh, loss of smell and taste zinc needed. Interestingly, it brings to my mind uh, there was a, an inhaled zinc product for a while uh, that was associated also with loss of sense of smell. So we want to keep that in mind. Um, great point about dry skin. Yeah, keep your keep your hand skin uh, healthy if you can. No need to apologize. Uh, thank you, Rosemary Benjamin, for saying that. Uh, I'm just, folks, I'm doing the best I can to get this information to you. I am so grateful to for all of you who are watching now and all of you who will watch this later. Uh, how to sterilize things that go in the fridge. Are you saying we should cook our fresh food before we want to eat them, no salads. This is a question that uh, we are working through right now. Uh, cucumbers and tomatoes get uh, into a pot of soapy water that is warm and they are scrubbed with a brush. Then they dry for a couple of days. Uh, I don't treat our, those types of vegetables with a bleach solution. Perhaps we could. Uh, I just get the willies about uh, consuming bleach. I think soap, warm soap, uh, soapy water is a good thing. Uh, and um, I'm not really eating uh, leafy greens right now, except for the ones that we've had uh, from before. I'm growing as much as I can uh, in the yard and hope to be able to start harvesting kale and lettuce uh, soon. Uh, we do have a lot of frozen vegetables. I think that is the ticket. Uh, you can, I think, uh, if you're careful, get uh, leafy greens like spinach and uh, kale, and uh, then uh, you can cut them up and uh, cook them and then eat them and or freeze them. Remember though that your cutting board and your knife uh, then need to be treated as if they are contaminated. So not so keen on bringing that into the house right now. It's a very, very uh, tough call. It's a very challenging situation. Um, okay, uh, thank you uh, everyone. Um, um, okay, let me, uh, uh, there's one other thing, uh, you know, in this talking about the bioflavonoids, um, in talking about the bioflavonoids, there is one uh, flavonoid um, that, uh, well, there is something uh, along the lines of that that is derived from uh, strawberries. It's called Fisetin, F-I-S-E-T-I-N. I've talked about, about it before. And um, um, that is a way, or it's described as a senolytic, and I've given you previous uh, references to that, meaning it helps uh, break down old, aged immune cells and allows um, newer immune cells to then populate. How effective it is, I don't know. I am taking it myself. Um, what time zone is our 6 p.m.? That's the Eastern time zone. And uh, that, that's in about ah, 10 minutes. I've got to get ready for that real soon. Um, okay, let me look at a couple of more things. Uh, yes. All right. Um, let me move on, folks. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm going to move on to uh, conclude with a great poem because I think we should all recognize that we can do this. We can absolutely do it. And I don't want to hear the word can't uh, because can't... Uh, gets in our way. And this is a poem by Edgar Guest, and it's called Can't, oddly enough. Can't is the worst word that's written or spoken, doing more harm here than slander or lies. On its, 
On it is many a strong spirit broken, and with it many a good purpose dies. It springs from the lips of the thoughtless each morning and robs us of courage we need through the day. It rings in our ears like a timely sent warning, timely sent warning, and laughs when we falter and fall by the way. Kant is the father of feeble endeavor, the parent of terror and half-hearted work. It weakens the efforts of artisans clever and makes of the toiler an indolent shirk. It poisons the soul of the man with a vision. It stifles in infancy many a plan. It greets honest toiling with open derision and mocks at the hopes and the dreams of a man. Kant is a word none should speak without blushing. To utter it should be a symbol of shame. Ambition and courage it daily is crushing. It blights a man's purpose and shortens his aim. Despise it with all of your hatred of error. Refuse it the lodgment it seeks in your brain. Arm against it as a creature of terror and all that you dream someday you shall gain. Kant is the word that is foe to ambition an enemy ambushed to shatter your will. Its prey is forever the man with a mission and bows but to courage and patience and skill. Hate it with hatred that's deep and undying, for once it is welcome, twill break any man. Whatever the goal you are seeking, keep trying and answer this demon by saying, I can. Okay, I'm going to go to the uh, podcast. Uh, please post uh, uh, where that is again. And um, I will see everybody soon. I am grateful for um, our time together. And uh, by all means, you don't need to wash your hands for 20 minutes. We will talk soon. I hope to see you all tomorrow. Bye for now.